Good morning. A big welcome to those of you who are joining us online and who are in the fellowship hall or in your cars. So what day is it today? Do you have one? Good. And so I want you to make sure you have a palm. If you're at home, you might uh, grab a piece of paper or something. Um, and you might even look in your Bibles uh, to Gospel of Mark, chapter 14 and 15. Uh, we will begin this morning with our Gospel uh, and then our palm procession. As we do, make sure to be putting those high and uh, celebrating our Lord. Uh, more details about that service later, although today, during communion, uh, we will not have the wafers, but we will be back to the... So that's a good move? Okay, that's a good move. Also today, after this service at 9.30, we have classes for all ages. Adults will be in the fellowship hall. Uh, it's our last session of Prayer 101. You don't have to have been there before. Certainly welcome you and invite you to be a part of that. Jacob, do you have announcements? You set up a barrier there, so I got to go. Around. Yeah, sorry about that. You set up another one here. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Uh, first of which is that we are doing an Easter egg hunt on Easter at about 9.45. Uh, if the students want to help at around 9.15, uh, we're going to be hiding Easter eggs all over the place outside. It's going to be a great time. We really, uh, we really look forward to that. We also have Sunday school that's available as well as Wiggle Worship. Uh, that's going to be available uh, both this Sunday and next Sunday as well. And then finally, we are going to prepare for the uh, joyful procession. So if any students, young students, want to join or older students want to join, uh, they're dismissed to go with me now uh, to uh, the Sunday school area as well. Thank you. Wow, you were brief. <laughs> I'll be brief also. This week, of course, is Holy Week. Uh, there will be no Wednesday service because that is our, uh, for this week, that is our Monday, Thursday service. That's at 7. You can see these details on your orange bulletin insert. Good Friday, also at 7 o'clock. And then Easter services at 6, 8, and 10.30. Um, reservations are being made. You probably know that. If you have tried, please do try again. Um, there, number one, there is room in the fellowship hall. And things change. And so please put your name on the waiting list. Because every time we do this, things do change. So uh, there's still room in the fellowship hall. And then... Put your name on the waiting list for the sanctuary. Uh, I draw your attention also if you'd like to sign up for an Easter lily, notice the details on the bottom of that page. Those are the announcements. I invite you, please stand. For those of you at home, I'm going to say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Your response, Hosanna in the highest. Are you guys ready? Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say to them, the Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found the colt tied near a door outside in the street. And as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road. Others spread leafy branches 
that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter life with you. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Together let us pray. Almighty God, 
You sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take our flesh upon him and to suffer death on the cross. Grant that we may share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. So this day, we are the ones who joined the throng when Jesus was making his triumphal entry into the holy city of Jerusalem. They too put their branches and their cloaks along the road to celebrate him, their king. Seven days or five days later, what are they shouting? Crucify. It's the same inconsistency we find in our own lives. At one moment, giving thanks and praise, looking to follow him, that our lives may reflect his light and goodness, and then the other going exactly the opposite way. Such is our struggle. So today we join them also. Today we will have a reading of the Passion. There will be four readers. You are also a part of this. In front of you, you have a booklet. You will be the people. Whenever it says that, you read your part. Throughout this reading, there will be three times that we sing a verse of the hymn, Go to Dark Gethsemane. You will notice because our organist will briefly introduce each time. Notice several things. In Jesus' day, people did not have watches, and so they didn't say 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and 12 o'clock. But everything started at sunrise, think 6. And so the third hour would be what time? 9 in the morning. The, the sixth hour is noon. And the, th the ninth hour is three when Jesus dies. Notice also, as Jesus is carrying his cross, there you will hear of a Simon of Cyrene, and only Mark, who we, whose gospel we hear today, only Mark tells us that Simon was the son, or excuse me, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Who cares? Why would we want to know that? I believe Mark was writing to a specific community, like this one. And in this community, there were two men, Rufus and Alexander. Can you imagine hearing that their father was the very one who carried Jesus' cross for him? Can you imagine going to them later and saying, tell us about that. What did your father say about Jesus. He met him personally. So also, we hear the call to carry our cross with him. Third, in the gospel, especially at the very end, after Jesus' crucifixion, we hear that he is dead. There's always been a question about the resurrection and about Easter. Well, maybe Jesus wasn't really dead. He was just weak. He had fainted. Something happened, and so he revived somehow in the tomb. Mark wants us to know this was no uh, healing. This was a resurrection from the dead. You will hear how Joseph of Arimathea goes to Pilate. We hear that Pilate wonders if Jesus were already dead. It, Jesus, it, it generally took two, three, four days to die on the cross. For Jesus, it's just a mere few hours. Pilate wonders if Jesus were already dead. 
he summons the centurion and asks him if Jesus is already dead. And when Pilate learned from the centurion that Jesus was dead, he gives him permission to take the body and bury him. Three times we hear it like a gong, like a bell chiming, tolling. Jesus is dead. Profound message then next week when we hear he's alive. Also, six times you will hear that Jesus is proclaimed king, almost always mocking. Kids, keep track each time. See if you can count six of the times you hear the word king. And then finally, in the Gospel of Mark, the question is always this. Who is he? Who is Jesus? Early on in the Gospel, we hear that he uh, healed a man and then proclaimed his sins forgiven. The authority says, who can forgive sins but God alone? Later in the Gospel, the disciples themselves ask the question, who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? Chapter 8, Jesus will ask the disciples, who do people say I am? They give their answers and then he says, but who do you say that I am? Am I your Lord? Are you following me? Are you living lives that make sense as you bear the name Christian? And then finally, at the end of the story that you will hear today, after Jesus is crucified, as he dies, the centurion, a foreigner, will say of him, truly this was the Son of God. Finally, the confession, not from his people, but from someone outside. We, uh, I ask you to turn to your booklets. Now it was two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him, for they said, Not during the feast, lest there be a tumult of people. And while Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at table, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment of pure nard, very costly, and she broke the flask and poured it over Jesus' head. But there were some who said to themselves indignantly, Why is the ointment thus wasted? This ointment might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given it to the poor. And they reproached her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, and whenever you will, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burying. And truly, I say to you, wherever the gospel is preached in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray Jesus to them. And when they heard it, they were glad. 
and promised to give Judas money. And he sought an opportunity to betray Jesus. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and someone carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the householder, The teacher says, Where is my guest room? where I am to eat the Passover with my disciples. The householder will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There, prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city, and found it as Jesus had told them. And they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they were eating at table, Jesus said, Truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and say to him, one after another, Is it, is I? it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that person by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that person if he had not been born. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup and having given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I shall not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though they all fall away, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly, I say to you this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter said vehemently, if I must die with you, I will not de deny you. And they all said the same. And they went to a place which is called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. He said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed, that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. And Jesus came and found them sleeping, and said to Peter, Simon, 
Are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And again Jesus went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately while Jesus was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, Whomever I shall kiss is the one. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when Judas came, he went up to Jesus at once and said, Master. And he kissed him. And they laid hands on Jesus and seized him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all forsook him and fled. And a young boy that following Jesus, with nothing but a linen cloth about his body, they seized him. But he left the linen cloth and ran away naked. Follow to the judgment hall, view the Lord of life. led Jesus to the high priests, and all the chief priests and elders and scribes were assembled. And Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council sought testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many bore false witness against Jesus, and their witness did not agree. Some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Yet not even so did their testimony agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, have you no answer to make? What is it that these people testify against you? But Jesus was silent and made no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his garments and said, why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And some began to spit on him, to cover his face and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! And the guards received him with blows. And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the maids of the high priest came. And seeing Peter warming himself, 
She looked at him and said, You are also with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And Peter went out into the gateway. And the maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while again, the bystanders said to Peter, Sir, you are one of them, for you are Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this one of whom you speak. And immediately the cock crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests with the elders and scribes and the whole council held a consultation. And they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, You have said so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, have you no answers to make? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate wondered. Now at the feast, Pilate used to release for them one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder and the insurrection, there was someone called Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he was wont to do for them. And he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release for them Barabbas instead. And Pilate said to them again, then what shall I do with the one whom you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted out all the more, Crucify him. And Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas. And having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Calvary's mournful mountain climb, there adoring at his feet. Mark the And the soldiers led Jesus away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium. And they called together the whole battalion. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And plating a crown of thorns, they put it on him. And they began to salute him. Hail, King, King of the Jews. Jews. And they struck his head with a reed and spat on him. And they knelt down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. And they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. 
And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. They offered Jesus wine, mingled with myrrh, but he would not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The instruction of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers, one at his right hand and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests mocked him to one another with the scribes, saying, he saved others. He cannot save himself. Let, Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour had come, that is noon, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, Behold, he is calling Elijah. And one ran and filling a sponge full of vinegar, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that Jesus had breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from afar, among whom were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James the younger, and of Joseph and Salome, who when Jesus was in Galilee, followed him and ministered to him, and also many other women who came up with Jesus from Jerusalem. And when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And Pilate wondered if Jesus were already dead. And summoning the centurion, Pilate asked him whether he was already dead. And when Pilate learned from the centurion that Jesus was dead, he granted the dead body to Joseph. And Joseph bought a linen shroud and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock. And Joseph rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid.
Hear the words of St. Paul as he writes to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Though, though he was in the form of God, did not e regard equality with God as something to be grabbed, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant. Being born in human likeness, being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Please stand. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your son's death on the cross a long time ago, before we were even born. And yet it is true that our actions, our own actions, our own sin drove him there. Who was the guilty? Who brought this upon thee? Alas, my treason, Jesus hath undone thee. Twas I, Lord Jesus, I it was denied thee. I crucified thee. Lord, give us eyes to see who we really are. That in thinking that we are going the right way, often it's just the opposite. In looking for the light, we dig in the darkness. In trying to be free, we find ourselves in bondage. In going our own way, we end up lost. And you, Lord, have borne the cost. Lord, we ask for your mercy, that you would wake us up, turn us around, give us eyes to see the truth and not be deceived by our own rationalizations. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this broken world for which you died. We pray for those who are hungry, homeless, hurting, wandering. Those who are dealing with anxiety. Those whose health is failing. We pray for your healing. We pray for mothers. We pray for marriages struggling. We pray for those who are having difficulty. For all of these, Lord, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in our congregation who are deployed, we pray, Carson, for Matt and Kyle, Sean, for their families, continue to guide and direct and comfort them all. Lord, in your mercy. For Didi Panzo and his wife Serafina as they are working with our support for those who are in the Congo of Africa. We pray for those in our midst, for Tom, Dwayne, and Gail, Jan, and Grayson, and Josh, for all others who yearn for your healing touch. Lord, in your mercy. 
Lord, it is clear we do not deserve to come to your table. We have not loved you with our whole heart. Sometimes you have been far from us, at least in our own mind. We have not loved our neighbor as ourself, our husband, our wife. We have not been faithful. And yet as we come before you, knowing our need, you still invite us back to your table. Lord, say the word, and we shall be healed. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you uh, to share God's peace with one another with a friendly wave, especially those who are distanced. And I invite you to join with me in our offering prayer. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possession, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who acts for us. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life, lies into truth, darkness into light. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Holy, mighty, merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this, remembering me. After supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you, and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, remembering me. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that you've refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace, serve the Lord. Praise be to God. Mm.